Today I want to show you the process of putting together the PrinterBot Simple Maker's Edition. This was a really special project to me because my son and I actually did this together. In fact, we actually went in and bought this together. The PrinterBot Simple Maker's Edition sells for about $350 and comes as a series of laser cut wood pieces as well as electronics. So in this first step, my son and I are kind of laying the pieces out and figuring out how to get the first parts together. Um, that would be the Y uh, component. I didn't record every single step of this process, so at this point, what you can see is the main body of the printer is partly assembled. One of the motors is in there, and that's sort of at the foreground there. I just took out the printer board, which is the main set of electronics that PrinterBot sells and uh, is included with the kit. And getting this fit into place was a little bit tricky. Now, I have to give a plug for PrinterBot. They did a fantastic job of helping me out. We had a new puppy over the summer, and I had gotten this kit in. We'd done some work on it, and then I left it out, and the dog actually chewed part of the printer board. PrinterBot shipped me a free replacement, and they were fantastic about the whole thing. So many thanks to them. Here you can see me putting in the rods that the uh, Y-axis will travel on. And this is getting the side panel ready for the actual body of the printer. Now, getting this on was definitely a little tricky. The laser cut wood fits together with a tab and slot system, and it's really difficult to press fit some of these things. This one, I think, was the hardest piece of all to get pushed down on there. But after a lot of kind of fiddling around, I finally got it on. The belt drives were also a little bit tricky at times. These basically thread through a couple of bearings and around one of the motors that's in there. You can see me putting on the rails for the Y-axis to travel on. And one thing that was interesting about the construction of this is that they use zip ties in a lot of places. And I found that when we started using it, those zip ties didn't always work the best. So that may be something that I look to upgrade. It feels like there's a lot of slop because some parts are simply zip tied together. The drive belts themselves seem to be okay, but I did have to tighten up the Y-axis drive belt after a while. So you can see me putting that on and getting that in place. Now getting the extruder, which is the part that actually melts the filament um, and squirts it out, getting the extruder and the auto leveling probe put in was a task that was a little bit fiddly as well. The leveling probe was pretty easy and that was the part that I just put together. The extruder was a little bit trickier just because the instructions didn't seem quite as clear. One thing about the printer bot, however, is that the support forums um, and the community that they have is really good. On the instructions, there are places for people to leave comments, and that was really, really helpful because I realized that there were things that I just didn't know or that I had missed. Some hints and some tips, and I definitely took advantage of that. So you can see me putting on the actual extruder here. This is the part that, uh, that the filament will come through, and it kind of tensions the filament as it's coming into the extruder head. By this point, my son had kind of checked out a little bit because some of these things were a little bit complex. But you can kind of see him in the background there helping out along the edges. Adding the fan was pretty straightforward. The extruder went in pretty well. Um, I did find that it would slip occasionally. So you have to be really kind of careful as you get that put in there and just follow those directions carefully. Getting the electronics, the extruder, the motor, all that stuff wired up um, proved to be pretty simple for the most part. I did realize that I had threaded them through the wrong part of the body because it wasn't particularly clear in the instructions. But my son kind of checked back in at this point, which is great, and we actually wired up the electronics together. This is him attaching one of the pieces. Yeah. How am I supposed to... You got it? So what did we just push in there? The X end stop? No, that one was the, that was the Y end stop. He actually ended up using the printer bot as his STEM fair project for his school. This is a non-judged science, technology, engineering, and math exhibit where kids could come in and show their projects. So we actually had it set up running a demo print and running uh, some video from this process of putting it together so people could see. And there was a lot of interest as we were running the demo prints for it. No, leave this one alone. This is this, this right here is the Z motor. So remember how I was showing you with your thumbs to go ahead and slide it in all the way? Okay. 
So once the electronics were all assembled, it was basically ready to go, but I realized that one thing was a little bit strange. The power connection for the actual printer board, control board, sat far enough out of the wooden body of the printer that it wouldn't sit flush with the table. No matter how much I looked at it and kind of tweaked it, I just couldn't see any way. So I actually went out to the shop and created a little stand or platform for the printer to sit in um, with a saw and a router. So I'll show you that process now in the shop. I started with a piece of MDF that I cut down to size and I made some quick dimensions to figure out what the interior uh, size needed to be and that was all of the electronics and the power connector and everything. That needed to basically be hollowed out so that there was space between um, the electronics and whatever it was sitting on. And then the inside of it, or the outside edge of it rather, needed to be wide enough for the, uh, the wooden sides of the printer bot to actually sit on so that the electronics would be held up. So I'm using the jigsaw to cut that channel or that space out. And then I'm using the router to basically create a rabbit, a little ledge for the printer bot to sit on. Uh, I do have a rule clamped to one side of it to kind of act as a guide. Um, I did have to go back and kind of clean it up freehand a little bit after that. And that's what you can see me doing right here. But with just a little bit of work, the printer bot sat down in there pretty nicely and the power connection wasn't strained and it looked nice and level as well, which is pretty important. So we went ahead and ran our first prints. At first we were completely confused and things were completely not working out the right way. We realized we had a couple of the motors hooked up backwards. Um, and that was a big issue. It took a couple hours of debugging, but once we finally figured that out, flipped the motors around and we printed our first test print, which was really cool. It's just a simple little square, but it was really great to see the printer actually um, doing what it was supposed to do. We were very excited. And like I said, when he showed it at his school STEM fair, the people that came by and saw it were also really intrigued and really excited, especially when we told him that we had built it ourselves. So thanks for checking out this video. If you decide to make the plunge, good luck. I definitely have some upgrades and some tweaks that I want to do to ours, but it was really exciting to get it built and assembled. Thanks for watching.